I think Dr. Venkatram, for you to take over, and we would like to listen from you. The allot relevance is it today, tomorrow, or always? Thank you. Yes, it will be. It will be very brief, and after my discussion, uh, kindly moderate the session. And uh, there are some lot of questions on coming up on the chat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all of you have heard uh, really a, a kind of a. a nice approach that a kaleidoscopic uh, view of uh, the birth of al hat the various publications more than 100 publications or so and uh, and the guidelines that you have seen so my uh, brief responsibility is uh, in term, of course non pharmacological treatment is a foundation for prevention of cardiovascular disease but in terms of the pharmacological treatment so many choices and what the guidelines have recommended, how to apply them to the ultimate advantage of the patient. Uh, so that is what I'm going to uh, discuss uh, with some relevance to the diuretics. Uh, uh, there are a number of trials uh, that have happened. Uh, these are diuretic-based trials uh, during our lifetime, which have uh, shown that diuretic-based therapy could have positive outcomes uh, and started in uh, hypertension detection follow program, multiple risk factor intervention trials, systolic hypertension elderly program, treatment of mild hypertension, all had SHEP, SHEP extension, SPRINT, et cetera. So these are landmark trials in the pharmacological treatment of hypertension. Of course, uh, we should also remember other trials which are not on this slide, like HOT, VALUE, ASCOT, LIFE, ACCORD, etc. All of these trials uh, with different outcomes have shown the proper management of uh, hypertension and how to further reduce the cardiovascular disease in the community. Now, uh, there is some controversy about, uh, not controversy, but uh, the American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology have not listed beta blockers in the initial therapy of hypertension as monotherapy, whereas European Society of Hypertension, European Society of Cardiology have. But one thing that has always been a common denominator for uh, various recommendations have been uh, diuretics. Uh, just a historical note of JNC1. I was a young resident at the time, and JNC1 was chaired by a person of Indian origin, Dr. Iqbal Kishan, who was at the Mayo Clinic at the time. And uh, they were the first uh, guidelines that they have recommended. And the same diuretics were recommended in JNC2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and uh, the last uh, guidelines, which is equivalent to JNC8, American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association. All of these trials have the common denominator that diuretics can be considered as initial therapy for hypertension. Now, this is uh, the reason I'm showing these slides is some of the meetings that we have in India, people generally ask uh, if there are direct head-to-head -head comparison between different diuretics, so not really. Now it's ongoing, but usually you look at the different trials and to see if you can match them to some extent. And this is a meta-analysis looking at the risk of cardiovascular events. Where if you give a hydrochlorothiazide in optimal dosage or chlorothaladone, and this meta-analysis suggests that uh, at the same level of blood pressure, there appears to be a benefit towards thiazide-like diuretics such as chlorothaladone, probably because of its long duration of action. Uh, when you look at, uh, uh, there are several meta-analyses. This is one meta-analysis looking at the comparison between chlorothaladone and hydrochlorothiazide in terms of the outcome. There is a little bit favor towards chlorothaladone. Again, probably due to the duration of action and continued blood pressure reduction where the blood pressure may not fluctuate that much. In fact, studies have shown that you have a continuous blood pressure control. 
uh, Dr. Welton has actually shown this slide uh, in, in a tabular form, where he and his colleagues in Brazil have shown that uh, clotalidone-based therapy in comparison to placebo has been shown to cause reversal or regression of left ventricular uh, hypertrophy, which is an important index of blood pressure control. And uh, Dr. Uh, Welton has already shown that the new onset of hypertension was significantly attenuated in the patients who were exposed to clotalidone compared to placebo. And this prevention of hypertension uh, is somewhat comparable to trophy trial, which also was shown by Dr. Belton. So it looks like at least two uh, agents uh, have been shown to prevent new onset of hypertension, almost like a prophylactic pharmacological therapy to prevent hypertension. A uh, few things, uh, some of uh, World Hypertension League, uh, International Society of Hypertension, with which we have worked, uh, and people have come and worked in India. This is uh, the past president of uh, World Hypertension League. Uh, he, uh, at that time, based upon the evidence, he suggested that clotalidone low dose is a good option for countries like India. And uh, because the, the aim of World Hypertension League is to control the blood pressure uh, globally. Late Dr. Thomas Giles, who was also uh, in India several times, and he also looked at the dosages and the response to treatment. And before he passed away, he did say that probably a low dose therapy in combination could be important for blood pressure control in India. The last uh, president of the American Society of Hypertension before it merged with the American Heart Association, Dr. Joseph Bizegnano also looked at all the data that were published of, uh, from India on cardiovascular deaths suggested that uh, low dose chlorothalidone therapy has the potential of improving the patient compliance with good blood pressure control. And I have uh, summarized all these things, all these trials were discussed earlier on. Dr. Franz Meserly, who is uh, uh, once upon a time, who was a critic of meta-analysis, now he's a meta-analysis expert. Uh, has uh, also suggested that countries like India, with large populations, as Dr. Welton has pointed out, of uncontrolled hypertension could benefit from proper application of pharmacological advances and clinical outcome trials. So ladies and gentlemen, in the brief time uh, that I had, I, the question that has been asked to me before about the comparison between di different diuretics based upon the scientific evidence I have shown uh, to some extent. And there's one small point, a personal point that I want to make. Uh, in late 70s and early 80s, my former partner, late Dr. Norman Kaplan, introduced me to a researcher at University of California, Los Angeles, late Dr. Mohinder Sambi, S-A-M-B-H-I. He was a very good researcher uh, of Indian origin. And uh, I was young at that time, he put his hand on my shoulder and gave me a book. He said, Venkata, you go back and read this book. And I looked at the book and the book was called Protalidon. I never, he edited a book and which had got a lot of trials published at that time, a very remarkable individual. In terms, his main interest was renin angiotensin system, but he spent a lot of time looking at the pharmacological management of hypertension. And uh, in his honor, there is a chair of preventive medicine and hyper hypertension at, in Ludhiana. So there are some historical connections between the pharmacological advances and the current treatment of hypertension and people of Indian origin, including, of course, the discovery of reserpine in India by Dr. Drusum Jalvakil. Because the reason I mention is today's meeting is very, very historical. It is very unusual for most of us uh, to discuss trials that have been 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Most of the trials are very short-term trials. So I hope that in the time that was given to me, I gave a quick comparison and compared them to the guidelines. So with those remarks, uh, uh, JS, I will conclude and uh, I will ask you to completely uh, take over the session and uh, continue with the panels, panelists' remarks. And then uh, looks like there are some 
questions on chat box. So, Jagdish, it's